Needed a few minutes to grab, gather my composure. Somehow, some way, I'm just trying to just hold it together, you know? Lifelong Nick fan. Years of mediocrity. I thought this was going to be it at least weeks ago. And then, you know, when I was doing first take and we were in Oakland and I got word about Kyrie in Brooklyn. Realizing that that meant KD in Brooklyn. Realizing that the New York Knicks were going to go without anything. $70 million in cap space. Porzingis is gone. Porzingis can't be gone. And we don't get KD. And we don't get Durant and Kyrie, rather. No way. This can't happen. This can't happen. But it happened. The New York Knicks. With KD on the market, Kyrie on the market, Clay, Kemba, Jimmy Butler. They can't get somebody to come to Madison Square Garden. But because Brooklyn's got Sean Marks and because Brooklyn's got Kenny Atkinson and because Brooklyn has Live Nation. And they're Brooklyn. In three years, the Brooklyn Nets have accomplished what we've been waiting for the New York Knicks to pull off for a half century. And more specifically in 20 years, in the last 20 years, this is what they pulled off. This is what they pulled off. I know the Knicks are going to go out and get somebody maybe like a Julius Randle. But how am I supposed to feel right now? I'm going to try to get it together by first take tomorrow. But I can't promise y'all what I'm going to do. I can't promise what I'm going to say. See y'all in the morning. Peace. All right, earlier we gave you the news of the marquee names and free agency news in the NBA. Now we need the perspective and the context, so we bring in Stephen A. Smith for that. And Stephen A., let's start with what happened with the Nets, with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant both going to Brooklyn. How does that change the NBA landscape? Well, I definitely think it changes the landscape in the top media market in America. The fact of the matter is you have every reason to be thinking about the Brooklyn Nets, uh, the Yormick twins. One is running the Nets, one is running live. They, should, they obviously had a profound impact on Kyrie and Kevin Durant willing to come to Brooklyn. Of course, there's the Jay-Z element. There's the Rock Nation element. You got to take all of those things into consideration. Give Brooklyn its props, understanding that they are the basketball team in New York. You've got a Knicks franchise that's worth easily four and a half to five billion dollars, but you couldn't get one single free agent to come here. Not Kevin Durant, not Kawhi Leonard in all likelihood, not Kyrie Irving, certainly not Klay Thompson, not Jimmy Butler, not even Tobias Harris, absolutely positively nobody. And so when you look at it from that perspective, it just appears to be a very, very bad day for New York Knicks fans everywhere. Once again, they look like losers in all of this. And the team that's just 20 minutes away in Brooklyn looks like the winner. Sean Marks and Kenny Atkinson and the Nets ownership in three to five years established what we've been waiting for the Knicks to do for maybe more than a quarter century. And that is attract a marquee free agent to New York City. I don't recall when they've done it since the 70s, to be quite honest with you. And I'm not even sure about that.
Let's go big picture in the East. We're not quite sure what's going to happen with the Raptors if Kawhi Leonard decides to stay there or go to Southern California. But now you have Kimba Walker in Boston. You have Kyrie and KD in another year in Brooklyn. Now you have Al Horford and Tobias Harris back in Philadelphia. Jimmy Butler now evidently going to Miami. What is that power structure right now in the East? I think when you look at the Eastern Conference, you can't ignore Philadelphia, keeping Tobias Harris, adding Al Horford, still got Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons. You lost J.J. Redick. I didn't like that. He went to New Orleans. He's a sniper. You want to keep somebody like that on your squad, no question about it. But I think by virtue of default, you got to pay attention to the Philadelphia 76ers. And obviously, you look at the Milwaukee Bucks and say those are the two teams because if Kawhi Leonard ends up leaving Toronto, why would we believe in Toronto? It's just that simple. In the case of Milwaukee, you lose Brogdon to the Indiana Pacers. That's something that I think derails you. So you can make a legitimate argument that right now is presently constituted. The Philadelphia 76ers should be the favorites to come out of the Eastern Conference. Then when you look out west, again, all of that is nullified if Kawhi stays in Toronto. Because if Kawhi stays in Toronto, clearly Toronto's the team to beat. But a lot of people are anticipating he may leave. So when you look at it from that perspective, the bottom line is Kawhi is going to have a decision to make, and we can't rule out Toronto. It would be foolish to do that with Masai Ujiri there, but it does appear like L.A., his hometown, has the edge at this particular moment in time. So much has happened here on this Sunday and seemed like so much more will happen over the next several months to come. It should be another juicy edition of First Take on ESPN with Stephen A. Smith, Monday morning, 10 Eastern. Stephen A., appreciate the time. Durant the full max because they were concerned about his Achilles injury. You know what that means? I need to bring in the greatest Knicks fan I know, Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> look, at the, look at the look on his face. Stephen, <laughs> I'm supposed to ask you if this is something, nothing, or everything. I can tell by your face, it's not nothing. <laughs> you know, um, I can't even put into words my level of disgust, frustration, and beyond. Obviously, weeks ago, we all got, you know, indications. It wasn't just me. It was Ramona who does a great job. I can't say enough about the job you guys have done just as a show. Brian, I mean, everybody, you guys have been fantastic. But despite the obvious, I was holding out hope. That, you know what, Kyrie and KD might not go to Brooklyn after all. That they might come to New York City. That they might bless us with their presence. And we might have a star for, for the first time in quite a while. I don't want to hear about Patrick Ewing. I don't want to hear about Carmelo Anthony. <laughs> I don't want to hear about Bernard King. I mean, that's how far back I got to go, y'all. I mean, it's been that bad. I didn't want to hear all about that. I was holding out hope. But then when you put into perspective that you lose out on KD or you lose out on Kyrie, you know what, that's bad enough. But it's not just that. It's KD, it's Kyrie, it's Kawhi, it's Klay Thompson, it's Jimmy Butler, it's everybody, for crying out loud. And then they had the nerve to get on my damn nerves by bringing up Boogie Cousins as if that was going to suffice. And I I mean, I immediately picked up the phone, y'all, and called the Knicks and said, oh, hell no. He better not, that better not be your consolation. I know exactly what I said to them. I said, this is not a call asking for anything. This is a call telling you, as an organization, that you better not even think about trying to sell Boogie Cousins to us in New York City. Not to knock Boogie Cousins, Boogie Cousins, because when he's healthy, we know he can drop 28 and 12 in his sleep. But he ain't the answer we were looking for in free agency. And I was assured at least that wouldn't happen. But as we sit here today, reflecting on the state of affairs in New York, and Amin said it best, it's not, it's, it, it's bad enough that you don't have Kyrie and you don't have KD. But both of them went 20 minutes away <laughs> to traffic on Atlantic Avenue to the Barclays Center instead of Madison Square Garden. And I'm looking at Sean Marks, who's done a fabulous job for the Nets. I'm looking at Kenny Atkinson, who's done a fabulous job. And let's not ignore Live Nation because uh, your Mac and those brothers, the twin brothers. Remember, yep. his brother, his, his, his twin brother is running Live Nation. Don't think for one second they didn't have everything to do with what has been transpiring here with Kyrie and KD going to the Brooklyn Nets. But in the end, you're the New York Knicks, and not only did you lose out, but you lost out to Brooklyn. And then what do you do? You sit up there and you you send Ramona and Woj information. Well, we weren't going to give him the max anyway. How stupid! 
stupid can you be? Well, that as was my question, Stephen A. To, do you to, have to, a bigger problem with the fact with that, that they didn't? <laughs> that they what? What? For I, I, there's so many things I need to ask you. What do you think of the fact that they didn't want to offer him the max when, as the guys here pointed out on set, the team with the most information about his medicals, the Warriors, were willing to offer him that full five-year max? Well, and also, what do you think about the fact that they I, made it public that they didn't offer him the max? Well, first of all, first of all, making it public is Bush League. It's emblematic of what we've thought about the New York Knicks. I thought the Steve Mills, Scott Perry era was supposed to be a bit different. This is a James Dolan caliber mistake, but we know James Dolan isn't the one that put this out there. I'm looking at the president of basketball operations, Steve Mills. Why the hell would that statement be publicized? Makes no sense whatsoever. It looks bad. I can't ignore that. But more importantly, I think they're lying. Because the fact of the matter is, is that as recently as a week ago, Although they wanted to get the medical report, I went right on first take and I reported that the New York Knicks are hesitant to offer the max deal until they get a hold of the medical report. So it's one thing to sit up there and say, we just want to dot our I's, cross our T's, and make sure that his health is fully in place before we make the max offer. It's another thing entirely for literally minutes after losing out on him to Brooklyn, your position is, well, we didn't want him anyway because we were not, we, we were worried about his health. Excuse me, a career 27 point per game scorer. All of y'all know basketball. This is not a dude whose success is predicated simply on his athleticism. If it were Russell Westbrook or Derrick Rose back in the day or somebody like that, it would be different. But 6'11", with a 7'6 wingspan, who's a sniper, who's a two-time champion, a reigning two-time finals MVP, I'm sorry, you can't rely on that dude to be better than what you have had when you're the New York Knicks and you've had nothing for years? Please, it's a joke that they would even put that statement out there, and it's really sad. All right, what do you think about them going forward then? Again, you are my touchstone as a Knicks fan. You and our producer, Steve. So I, I don't want to make you cry again, but they have just signed Julius Randle for You're three years. You're trying to, Rachel? I, th I thought you loved me. I thought you all loved me. How could you even ask? What does it look like going forward? Do you know what else? Didn't you see what else Ramona and them put out? Ramona and Woj put out. They're in Los Angeles as we speak. Are they talking to Kawhi? We don't know. It, clearly they weren't talking to KD. They're talking to Julius Randle. I respect him. He can play. I think if they get him, he's a plus, not a minus. But when you were thinking and dreaming and fantasizing about Kyrie and KD and all of these boys, and even Kawhi to a lesser degree, even though we know that's a pipe dream, to even quote, your, the name of your organization with Julius Randle, doesn't that need to wait until July 2nd or July 3rd? You have to do that today? Today? I mean, you, listen, right, right? They, they, clearly, they clearly have no love for me or Knicks fans everywhere. They don't love Spike Lee. They don't love, they don't love Ben Stiller. They don't love anybody. They don't love anybody to do this to us. Let me they don't a, love anybody. Let me throw a couple more names at you that Ramona's reporting they're interested in. Bobby Portis and Reggie Bullock. <laughs> what, what? 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 Rachel, what are you doing to me? I'm what are you trying, I mean, I'm could you ask here. me something I about can't. Kawhi? <laughs> could, could, could you ask me about Jimmy Butler? Could you ask me about something? Ask me about anything other than the Knicks right now. How about that? <laughs> anything other than them. Because I'm, just, I'm so done right now. In I'm just so done Stephen with them right now. Jimmy Butler is He's still amazing. on the board. And, and, and this is a question I do have. And look, I don't know what Jimmy Butler is trying to do. And obviously, it seems that Philadelphia was not willing right. to offer him a max considering he's no, wanting to have these sign and trade uh, discussions with Miami. New York could walk in and offer him their version of a four-year max as a Knicks fan. Do nope. you want them to do that? No, nope. and I've been told that that's not what they're going to do. They're going to save first-tier max caliber money for first-tier max players. So in that case, they wouldn't do that. They weren't going to do it with Tobias Harris. They're not going to do it with Jimmy Butler. I don't have a problem with that because as much as I love Jimmy Butler and his game, he's not that difference maker in the New York market. That's not the answer to Kyrie and KD. That's emblematic of a grabbing Amari Stoudemire who was injured after you couldn't get LeBron James in 2010. Plus, I hear Jimmy Butler 
possibly, obviously Houston, Miami, those are mm -hmm. options, but po assuming Philadelphia is willing to work with them, but possibly the Clippers, he could be joining Kawhi because I know this much about the Clippers. They believe the Lakers have no shot at Kawhi. They believe it's them or the Toronto Raptors, mm. and obviously they're willing to bring another player along with Kawhi Leonard to join a crew that already won 48 games and gave Golden State a run in the first round of the playoffs. So we'll see how that unfolds. But in the end, this is the bottom line. One of the elite free agent classes that we have ever seen in NBA history the New York Knicks traded Chris Stapps Porzingis, sold us on the notion that we're going to have a big-time legitimate shot at somebody this coming Sunday, this coming summer. Chris Stapps Porzingis is gone, and nobody is here in return. I might be in a better mood tomorrow. Or I, I, I'm lying. <laughs> Maybe a week. Let's not but, get ourselves, But I will Stephen tell a. you this. Today, today... No way. No way. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on with us. And in honor of you and you and, and the, the way you have poured out your heart to us about your <laughs> Knicks, I just want to say. Uh, you know what, Rachel? I, 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 I'm watching, and I appreciate the invite. But I, I, your questions, Rachel, I got to tell you, I love you, but I didn't appreciate these questions. I, I, get it, I, I really get it. didn't. It's well, cruel. We'll, we'll, cruel. We'll talk again later. Thank By you so all much. y'all. <laughs> I appreciate it so much, Stephen. And, and we hope we wish Stephen a speedy recovery because really that's oh, what it sounds like. I don't think it's going to be he speedy. Needs, <laughs> exactly. I think so, tomorrow at 10 a.m. is when the recovery when, is going to really play and out. When, uh, and when you, there you go. And, and you heard him react. And, and look, I mean, you grew up in New York. Yeah. Uh, I don't think... Patience is what we're going to hear from Knicks fans. No, I mean, again, you know, before Stephen A came on, I said it's all about the context. If the context was we're building this thing, we're taking our time, we're going to do it right, I think people would be happy that it's another piece uh, added, right? But the problem is they sold the world on stardom, on the marquee of M M Madison Square Garden is going to have a superstar's name on it, and that's not what's happening. And whether they're lying when they said, ah, we, were gonna, we weren't going to offer the full max, or if that's the truth, either way, you look bad. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. I had heard, this is, as a reporter, you have to go through things step by step. Okay. Okay, so all week I had heard rumblings of this, and you would check in on it, and you would get conflicting information about it. So when you have conflict, even as, as, as late as yesterday, it was Jim Dolan and the ownership group, has a problem with, as Stephen A. said, they were hesitant to offer the full max until they could see the medical. I'm not sure if they ever saw that medical, but I know that Scott Perry, the general manager, got on a plane to Los Angeles today. Mm -hmm. If there was ever going to be a meeting with Kevin Durant, it would happen today. Right. But my understanding is there was never a meeting officially even scheduled. It was maybe a conference call if they were going to talk to him. So no at some face point... No FaceTime? They didn't even rate FaceTime, Ramona? <laughs> they, didn't, so, they didn't rate FaceTime in 2016 yeah. either. Right. And... Yeah. I think if you're not going to offer a full max, there's no reason to even talk. So Scott Perry got on a, a plane and is in Los Angeles meeting with Julius Randle. Really? He's agreed to a deal with Julius Randle. They knew pretty a little while ago that they weren't in the discussion if they weren't offering a full max. Look, I, I can't see the future. I don't know what's going to happen with Kevin Durant, but I do know this. They signed Amari Stoudemire with a very questionable medical yeah. history. It was a disaster. They gave Carmelo Anthony a $130 million mm -hmm. extension with a questionable knee. It did not turn out well. They looked at Porzingis and they I'm were... I'm not sure I'm putting all Wait, of that on Carmelo. We can go back to he, Joe Kim Noah okay. in right. this conversation right. as Joe, well. Joe, you're, very good point. Yep. They look at Porzingis, they were cons at least partially why they traded him was concerned yep. about his health. They are trying to learn from their mistakes. Doesn't mean that it's a good decision, but they are reacting to mistakes two, they've made in the past. Two rebuttals. One, none of those players is the, the cal caliber of player that Kevin Durant is. Two, at least... None of them the, had an injury as serious as he did. In the case of Amari Stoudemire, the incumbent team was like, I don't know, because I know I was in that room when we're talking about how are we going to partially guarantee this. In the case of Kevin Durant, none of those other teams can say that. Uh, Chicago with Noah or, or uh, Denver with uh, Carmelo. They offered five years full max. They had all the information. They were okay with it. But somehow now the Knicks and the, are going to be the And the Nets are obviously okay with yeah. it. Great. Yeah, absolutely. So much more to come. Yeah. We're in hour four. Hour four, people, of this free agency oh. special. We got almost two hours to go. Oh.